Good morning, citizens. We are back. Uh, new series, new tutorials, some things have changed. Uh, so I'm going to kind of switch up how I do things eventually. But right now, we're going to start with, if, if you're watching this, I'm going to assume, brand new to Star Citizen and wanting to, to make some UEC. Uh, and so I'm going to start going with the basic commands and controls to show you how to play the game. And as it goes on, I'll be less and less showing you the, the simple things you should know how to do. Uh, first of all, just using your mouse, you can look around. Now, if you started in Lorville like I did, you're going to be and have like this. If you started another location, you're going to definitely have uh, a different surrounding and some things will be a bit different here because I am in Lorville. First things I like to do is I hit F12. Now, hit F12 turns the comms off. You see in the, the top corner, the top left corner comms are on comms are off that's the global chat as well and that's so that while i'm recording my videos you're not seeing all the text from everyone chatting through there but if you want global chat on hit f12 if it's not on that'll turn on hit enter like if i do this right now and i hit enter i can say 07 oh that's not exactly oh why am i typing too many things why am i holding shift there you go there you go oh look at that at the exact same time, that guy there said the same thing. So that is global chat. Hit enter, type, hit enter, go. If you decide you don't want to say anything, you've hit enter, just hit enter again, that closes it. So that is the first thing to do. Global chat on and off, F12. Second thing, you're in bed. There's going to be a key that you use more than any other key in this game, and that is the F key. The F key is the interact key and the inner thought key. Holding F and look around, I can go, oh, there's get up. Over there, I get up. So I have two options for getting up, and I can just hold while holding F, left click, or I can tap Y. And tap Y will get you up from a chair, get you up from a bed, get you out of your cockpit. If you're not getting out of your cockpit, you have to hold Y as opposed to tapping it, but there we are. Now we're gonna move around. WSAD moves you around, mouse kind of aims. Like any other game, very easy to move around, and we're in our hab. Now the habs here currently are not the same hab every time. You start a game, once you leave this room, you can't come back in. But you can kind of explore it and look around. Again, holding F, you can like look at something there and it says open. So I can hold F and click, and that will open it. Or, if I just tap F on some items, it'll close them or open them, it'll automatically. So I can tap F or I can hold F uh, and use a left click. So for the door, for instance, hold F, when I'm close enough, click open. But doors are easier just to walk up, tap F. That opens the door, and we're going to leave. We're going to walk out of our habs, and we are now in the main hab area. So once this door closes behind us, you can no longer open that door. This is not a one, that, uh, not a place you own yet. Eventually, you're going to own it, but right now, you don't own it. We can go look out at Lorville. There's the industrial wasteland of Lorville. Lots of dirt in the air, lots of machinery. There is a spaceport over here. You might see people taking off and landing. You can see the Taste of Spaceport signs are in the air there. What you want to do is you want to be on the top level. If you start down below, just come up the center stairs and come to the back. We are on the fourth floor. We have another character here, someone waiting for the elevator, so we'll get in with them. Now they can operate the uh, the floor there, but how an elevator works, I will show you when we get to the, the hangars. Now this person here, hold F, right click, and I can go actions, I can go player, I can go emote, and I can bow. And they walked away before I got it. But now that I have that, right click, holding F, right click, and you can have one of the things here. We can take these off, we can we can put them, but bow is back there. So that is one of the new changes, uh, how quickly some things work. But that is not that is not different, but inventory is different. Before, inventory used to be right here. Where now? Now knickknacks. Now knickknacks is a little bit different. So this shows you where items are. Right now, I've got stuff on Art Corp. Uh, apparently nothing. Um, how do I get? How do I go back? Da, 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 there we go. Uh, Hur L2. Do I have anything there? Faithful Dream Station. So these are places I've visited, but not uh, places that I have anything in. And then we have Hurston, where we are now. So, Thetis I've been to, Stanhope I've been to, Eta, Aberdeen, Lorville, Pinewood, I've been to all of them. Lorville is a place where items exist. So these are the items that are in Lorville. These are like my ships here, uh, I have a helmet here, I have a weapon here, 
we have some different types of armor here. We have a drag dragonfly here. All these are in Lorville. However, hit F1 again to close movie glass. Uh, I can't put them on that way. I have to hit I for inventory, and there we go. That is the local inventory. Currently, whatever is in Lorville is also in the station above in Everest Harbor. Same if you're on Microtech. Uh, everything in that inventory is in the station. I think it's called uh, Port Tressler. Is that above Microtech? I believe so. So, in order to, to look around, just hold right click and you can drag around. You can take this helmet off and put a different helmet on. Uh, that helmet actually doesn't go with there. We use this one. There you go. Let's put that helmet on. This is kind of the cool helmet, the Balefire helmet, because if I put the Balefire uh, chest on there, it'll have the cowl show up. You can see the cowl coming on and off when I do that. So you can put on and off the different helmets that you own through there. You can change your clothes. You can take this off and put on actual clothing. I do have clothing. There you go. I got like a jacket. I got hospital gowns. I got uh, uh, pants, a shirt, gloves, all those items. Uh, same with weapons. If I want to have something like utility, like my mining tool, if you take a mining tool, drag it onto my hip. Now it's it's in my inventory here. Anything that is in your inventory or you're wearing will be with you when you get on the ship. Anything in the local inventory will not. So if you want to carry something with you, you're going to have to put on some armor. Uh, we'll put on the bale fire just to show you. And that has some inventory space in it. So now you can see it's got some cargo space in here, so I can put some stuff in there. Can I fit this in there? Not big enough. Uh, but if I go ammo, definitely ammo will fit in there. You can see I've put in a bunch of ammo into there, into my, so that's in the chest armor. I'll drag it back here now. Also, uh, armor, chest armor can uh, take backpacks. So you can drop a little backpack on here, and now we're going to have a second inventory show up down at the bottom here. So that's the backpack armor and the core armor. This backpack, 8K of uh, micro SUs, if I take that off and I put on a larger backpack, uh, I can't because this armor will not accept it. So if you can't put it on, the reason why is this armor is too small. In order to put this backpack on, the larger one, I'm going to have to put on my Pembroke suit, which is a large size. Large size armor can carry a small backpack or a medium backpack, uh, but a small armor or medium armor can only carry it that size or lower. So we put on a larger here, and then we can put on, say, this backpack here. And we can see we went from eight. If we look at this, we're now up to 10 SEU. <laughs> so, pretty easy, pretty interesting. Uh, I like the new inventory system as far as changing things, putting on, and also it's very quick. You can see hitting I a bunch of times puts it on and off. What we're going to do is we're going to try doing a cargo box mission. That'll be our first mission to learn how to fly, learn how to navigate, and these boxes here uh, have something to do with those cargo missions. But to get a cargo mission, hit F1 again, and we're going to go look under Contracts Manager right down here. Click on that, Delivery, and we're going to pick up something on Hurston, and we're going to bring it to HDMS Anderson on Aberdeen. That's one of the moons. So we're actually going to do a little bit of flight out of the system. So we're going to accept this. We're going to fly to Pinewood on Hurston, then pick up a package and bring it to Anderson on Aberdeen. <laughs> We're going to get 3,000 UEC. So we're going to accept that mission. And then once we do that, hit F1 again. And we can now see a little marker has popped up. Looking down there, our package is 1,618 kilometers away. So we have to get to it. The way to get to it is flying. So we're now going to walk outside. We're now outside enjoying the view. Um, this planet we can survive on without helmets. Take this helmet off. Oh, I keep hitting F1 because I'm used to inventory with F1. I'll be doing that for a while. It's I. Uh, we can survive on here without a helmet. However, um, there's still a little bit of a glitch for doing these box delivery missions. Anywhere where you go through an airlock, if you're not wearing a helmet, even on a planet with a breathable, breathable atmosphere, uh, you might make it through once, but you definitely won't make it through twice, and you'll die. So we're going to have to have a helmet on while we're doing this mission. We're also going to a moon where there's no atmosphere, we're going to die there as well. So just take the, the route I'm taking, kind of keep to the left all the way down. You're watching the signs that say, taste the spaceport. And we're going to go there, coming through here, we're going to get to where there is, is a train. So we're just going to wait here 13 more seconds and a train will arrive. So we're now on the train again. We can head F in front of a seat. We can sit down if we like. Uh, in order to get up, 
as usual, you could hold F and click get up, or you could tap Y and we'll get up. The train here is the spaceport line. It's going to bring you to the spaceport. So we're going to head outside. You can see as we're traveling away from where we were, which was the Habs back there. We're going to be heading towards the spaceport. So the spaceport, we're kind of going around the outside of this. Uh, spaceport's on this side. We're heading towards that large building over there, but we're actually not going to get quite as close. The spaceport is before that. That's kind of midpoint between where we are and where we're going. So now we are at the spaceport, we're walking through. Again, you can't really get lost here. There's really only one way to go. Uh, do not go towards Central Business District. Don't get on another train. Uh, I always use this blue kind of billboard as a, uh, a little waypoint to know that I'm heading in the right direction or where I'm turning. We're gonna come through here, all these custom stations. None of these are passages to go anywhere. None of those doors work. So you're just gonna keep going through to get to a staircase heading up right here. Now if you want to change your walk speed, uh, mouse wheeling down slows you down, mouse wheeling up rolls you up, shift allows you to run even faster. If you want to see what you look like, hit F4. F4 is your camera control and now we are, we can hit F4 again, we're a little bit farther away, we're running around, we're moving. If you don't like where your camera's facing, hold Z and you can readjust your camera. Also holding F4 and using the arrow keys. You can adjust your camera left and right, forwards and back, and mouse wheel back uh, allows you to also adjust the camera. So this is actually more useful in ships, using F4 and Z to kind of adjust your angle of your ship to make sure that you're lined up with where you're landing or to check to see if your landing gear or your uh, landing ramp, I should say, is touching the ground. All useful. To get back, hit F4 again or back. One thing I'm going to do right away before I even get my ship, hit F1 and I'm going to put a helmet on always put a helmet on because I'm in a planet that you don't need a helmet and I'm about to get into a spaceship. I've hit F1 again. As I said, I'm going to do that for a while. Uh, what happens is I'm going to get into my ship and fly to a moon. If I get into my ship now, it's not going to cause me any issues. I'm not going to notice that I'm wearing no helmet. I might not really kind of clue in on that. As soon as I get out of the moon without a helmet, uh, I won't be able to breathe. And because my helmets are stored in the local inventory now, no longer global, you can't fix that by standing in your ship and putting on the armor you need. So it's good to always have your helmet on unless you're eating some food or you are doing anything specifically where you want to have someone actually see your face, just have a helmet on at all times to be safe. So we're going to look for these terminals. No matter where you are, you're looking for the ASOP terminals, this is what they look like. If you are somewhere you don't know where they are, uh, just use Global Chat and see where are the terminals at New Babbage or at Grim Hex and someone should be able to help you out. You want to find the terminals, hold F and click use and then your ships will be here. I have two ships here. I have an Aurora MR and a Nomad. Uh, now the Aurora is not here. It is on HDMS Thetis. So if your ship doesn't exist, if it's in another location or it's been destroyed, you're gonna have to run a claim, like an insurance claim. Click that and it's gonna take 41 seconds. If you have a massive ship, it might take a long time. It might even take over an hour. And for those, you can spend some of your money to make it faster. If I spend 300 right now, I'll get it instantly, but I can wait 30 seconds. I'm in no hurry, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna hit S to back away. I'm just gonna wait about 30 seconds. While doing that, we'll come look over here. This is the spaceport. All the ships in the spaceport are down below in these hangars. There's a door here, there's a door here. Another one right there. That's where the ships are. If you want to look at other ships that are available, here's one here. This is the M50, and it is about 1.2 million, I believe. Let me, where is it? Why can't I? There we go. 1.19 million. So there you go. So you could buy that with 1.19 million in game. If I hit F1, you'll see I'm a little bit short at about 94,000 right now. Not much at all. Uh, you can buy more ships at New Deal. <laughs> this is New Deal here. Go in here. There's a indoor and outdoor showroom. So the indoor showroom's there. We got a prospector. We got another Aurora there. Um, out here we have uh, a Mustang, a Constellation. Looks like a uh, Hammerhead, maybe. Is that what that is? I can't. Pretty far away. I don't feel like running over there. Ships to buy there. You can buy those ships in game. There's many other ships you can buy right by the prospector. I'll go in there. There's a terminal right in front, and that terminal allows you to um, purchase ships. 
So you can look here, use this, choose any ship that you want from different manufacturers. There's you can get like the the Starlifter M2 for 5.5 million. Anvil. Let's find one with more than one manufacturer. So there you go. Misc. There's different freelancer versions here that you can buy. All buy in game. This is all in game money you can buy to purchase the ships once you've earned enough money. So we are going to be working towards getting a prospector and doing some mining. That would be a ship to, to aim for getting. Uh, we do have our Aurora and our Dragonfly, which is like a little speeder bike, and we have the uh, the Nomad. Uh, those are the elevators. We'll see those in a second. We're going to go back and we're going to grab our ship. Hold F. Retrieve. And once it's here, it says Hangar 9. If you ever forget, your ship shows up. So there it is. It's 520 meters away, Hangar 9. If we go to the window, we can see that that's our hangar. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm holding F and mouse wheeling, and that allows you to zoom. So if you want to see something distant, hold F and zoom. If you have like a weapon zoom, that's a better way to look at things, but for now that's a way. So while holding F, uh, I can zoom in and try to interact with something. Let's say like a, a touch screen, it's a lot easier to do that. There's elevators here in both directions. Just go to an elevator, call elevator, and we're gonna head to hangar nine. So on this, uh, we didn't use the elevator in the hab, so I'll show you here. This one, hold, F. And while you're doing that, you can mouse wheel up and down until we get to the hangar we want. If you don't see it, that's how you, you locate it. And if you look back here now, we can see that our ship is moving towards us. Now, I always get in the habit of tap F4 just to make sure I'm wearing a helmet. Uh, but now with inventory, it does the same thing. You can kind of see if you're wearing a helmet. I always want to make sure. There is our ship. It says RSI Aurora MR where it is in the distance. When we get close, it switches to showing you entrance locations. Those two things there, hatches. So we don't have a ramp, we have hatches. Hatches are how you get into the ship. So we get up, we can open the ladder, we can open the door or enter the ship. So I'm gonna hold F, click enter ship. When you're standing close enough, you automatically get into the ship. And this is the Aurora. I love this ship, it's so cool. It's got a little bed here in the back. So you can lie down in the bed. Uh, if you can't really see, hit T for torch. That's your headlamp. Turn it on and off. Very easy. Uh, it's got a little interior space. Not much of one, but it's got an interior space, which makes it awesome for delivering packages. So we're going to go pick up a package. So we're going to get to the pilot seat, hold F, click enter pilot seat, and we're going get, to get into our ship. So now in our ship, when I mouse around, I can't look. You have to hold Z to look around because moving your mouse is trying to steer your ship. But our ship is off. We do have a little bit of a HUD, these things that are showing up here, but the ship itself is not powered on. And you can tell because these screens, known as MFDs or multifunction displays, are not working. Down here, if I hold F instead of Z, I'm able to move around, but I'm actually interacting. So Z is just looking, F is interacting. If I tap Z, now I'm not holding it down. But now I can't steer the ship. You have no ship controls when you let go of Z. So I try to hold Z and not tap Z so I don't get that locked into place. But holding F, we can see down here, flight ready and power on are your options. A better thing to do is just tap R. Tapping R, we've powered up our ship. Now there's currently a glitch with the Aurora. And so I'm gonna point this out because this is, in my opinion, a major glitch that kind of causes an issue. And this is something you have to be careful about and avoid is that normally you can use these screens in order to uh, interact with certain, certain things and comms is one of them. But if you look, when I bring mine over to the comms here, down in the bottom left corner, it's saying power off, power off. If I try to click on this MFD, I power off the ship. If I zoom in close, it's still not working until I get right into there. So don't use this screen like this to call for landing. Because if you're coming in for landing, there's a good chance you're gonna accidentally power off your ship and drop like a stone. So one thing to do is maybe move comms over to this side. So you can click on over here on menu and you can put comms there and take it off the other side or leave them both on. And I could click Lorville Landing Services and clicking that will cause the hangar doors, which are up here to open. Or another way to do it is hit F11, go to Friends, Lorville Landing Services, and then 
just wait until they acknowledge. Hit F1 to close your Moby Glass. And that has done the same thing. It has called them and now they're opening up those uh, things there. Now if you ever look at your ship and these are in the red, these two lines here, that means your engines are off. So the engines are off right there. Hit I to turn your engines on and off. When you land, always turn them off. That's the easiest thing to do. We're going to look also, we have our altitude right here. So that's our current altitude. We're at 966 meters above sea level. Over here, we have our speed. This little box here is our maximum speed that we can hit. If we go into the red, that doesn't hurt your engines. It just means that you are flying faster than you can easily control your ship. So you have trouble turning or, or steering or rolling or just any maneuvers while you are in the red zone because you're pushing your engines, but you're not hurting them. This current thing here is your current speed that you're moving versus your maximum, and that shows you your speed here. Down here we have VTOL, uh, coupled flying, which means if you let go of your spacebar or you let go of your your, uh, your 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 movement keys, you will either coast to a stop or you'll move you'll stop moving, uh, and you'll just hover in place. Uncoupled means that as soon as you let go of your controls, you'll just keep coasting in whatever direction you were going, or in the case of a planet, falling to the surface. So coupled used to be easy to turn on and off. Now it's a bit harder, so we're not going to worry about that right now because that's awesome because you don't want to fly uncoupled while you're learning to fly. Uh, also, don't worry about ESP. Really, gear and VTOL are your only things. Now, VTOL, for a little ship like this, isn't going to matter, but VTOL is turned on and off with K. You can see it's graying out. It's off. Now it's on, off, on. N is both for landing and your landing gear. So I'm going to hit up a little bit, so I'm flying a little bit. Now I'm going to hit F4 so you can see the ship. Now if I move my mouse, the ship moves, and I don't want to do that right now, so I'm going to hit Z, move to the side, and I'm going to tap N. And there we go. Landing gear are tucked in. If we go back to our main screen, you can see landing gear are now grayed out. Now moving the mouse causes me to move. That's why when you are in external mood mode, hold Z to be able to do this. Uh, remember, holding F4, you can zoom your mouse in and out. Might make it easier for landing when you have something like this, where you can see if you're lined up. So holding Y again, and we go way up in the sky. You can see we're now leaving quite quickly. Hit K for VTOL, we don't really need it on. What we want to do now is we want to leave the atmosphere because we want to be able to use our jump drive. If I tap B, our jump drive is spooling up. You can see it's spooling up there, but all these points are red. We can't jump to them. If I line up to this one, it should say exit atmosphere, there it is. So. We're just going to point relatively straight up. You can see I'm at about a maybe a 60 degree angle. Hit W, and if we look here, that's my maximum speed. I'm going to mouse wheel up, mouse wheel up. When you're just taking off, keep it down low like this so you don't lose control and slam into a wall. But now we're going to go all the way up. Now, I say all the way up, but you'll notice my speed, which is now going up, is eventually going to peter out. It's eventually going to stop. If you ever want to use cruise control, look by this box here, you'll notice it's just a box. If I hit C, it's now got this line with a little arrow on it. That's cruise control. C is cruise control on, C is cruise control off. So that is how you, if you want to just kind of fly at a certain dis, uh, certain speed without having to really control that too much, you can go with that. Um, another flight mode, if I turn the, uh, well, we'll stop right now. You saw I saw I reached 10,000 meters. So if I hit F4, and kind of go back. That's how high we've gotten from the spaceport and we're 10,000 meters is more than enough to now use a jump drive. So some of these arrows on the edges have turned blue and the blue means you can jump. So now we are going to find the the box that's on the top right corner right now showing us our uh, package pickup point. Now it looks like it's at the city but I'm going to aim right at it until the calibration is done. Instead of tapping B, I'm going to hold B. Holding B. And now our ship is flying away, taking off quickly over the planet's surface. Look at how fast we're going. Much faster. You could fly around the planet at normal speed and just have fun flying around. But look at how far we're going and how long that would take. We're using the jump drive is so much quicker. You're making so much faster trips just by using the jump drive. Jump drive stops you automatically. Whether you're going from a planet to a planet or to a planet surface location like we're doing now or a space station, it drops you out and stops you. So don't worry about 
slamming into the planet. Unless there's a bug that happens. You always, almost always, end up upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap B to turn off my jump drive. I'm going to hold Q. Q and E, roll your ship. Q is this way, E is this way. Um, normally, if I can't see where I'm going, I use B to kind of give me a distance marker location. See there, 24.2 in red. Because I'm doing a package delivery, it's also showing up in the blue there, so I don't need it. But if you're trying to get to a place that you don't have a marker, like this mission marker here, then you're definitely going to use the, the jump drive to show you your current location. When you jump, your ship automatically sucks its landing gear in if they're out. So always, always, always tap in, put your landing gear out before you get to where you're going. I'm going at about, you know, three quarter speed till I get closer. I'm about 16 and a half kilometers away. When I get to about four, I'm going to, to slow my speed down so I can control myself a bit better as I get there. Larger ships take a lot longer to slow down, but this Aurora will stop almost immediately. Now you'll notice, I'm not going any faster. Even though my maximum speed is up here, my speed is currently down here. The reason why is because we're in atmosphere, so that does expect, uh, affect my top speed. And it's actually slowing down. Even as I am full throttle flying towards the surface, I'm going 600, or 261, 260, 259, going slower and slower. I'm about 6,500 away now. It's dark here, so I can tap L, and that is your ship's lights. And those will help you with your landing. So I'll just move a bit closer. So right now I've let go of the throttle and I'm not stopping. So I've tapped S to, slop, to, to slow down and stop. Um, sometimes that happens when, uh, when you're holding W and then F at the same time. It's a little bit of an issue. Now the lights are sort of helping, but it's very dusty here. Uh, so the lights do affect your ability to see through the dust. Uh, we're coming down to this station here and it's got these two blue pads. These are Platinum Bay pads. These pads are where you can spawn land vehicles in the Platinum Bay uh, building, which is the building that's always got this blue light pole on it and the two blue pads beside it. Uh, there's usually also a trade terminal somewhere in a building that's got like a yellow light on it. We'll see if we can find it. So we're just gonna fly towards this large landing pad. We could land on the ground. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, so those are the stairs that we're heading for right there. So we'll just land on the ground in front of that instead of the landing pad. With a large ship like a Caterpillar or a, or a C2 or something, you want to hit the landing pads, but the Aurora can always land on the ground. Now we're on the ground, hit I engines to turn off my off. engines. Always turn off your engines. Hold Y. And we're going to get out of our ship. Now, during a storm, uh, this might hurt you a bit if you weren't wearing a spacesuit, but we're wearing a spacesuit, so we're good. Exit left, get out of the ship. Now, before we pick up the package, which is in there, I'm just going to take a quick look around. And see if I can find. Um, so that's. Is that platinum? Maybe not. That might be the one I'm looking for. So I'm going to run over here just so I can show you the trade terminal if you were trying to do some trading and earn some cash uh, in the game as well. So we're going to head towards this building with the large, the orange lights as opposed to the blue lights, which is the platinum bay. And it should say storage on it. So once I get here, I'll take a look inside. Uh, or up top here. Storage. Perfect. So we're going to come up here. Again, you can hold F, click open, walk into the uh, uh, airlock, hold F, hit cycle. This is where you might suffocate if you're not wearing a space helmet. So wear a space helmet going through these airlocks. And now we're in. And now this is the um, the, the trade terminal for shipping and uh, trade. So go use. We're going to buy some stuff. We select our Aurora and we can buy some diamonds for 6.27 or scrap or aluminum or waste. I don't know if these are good prices. I don't know the prices between one place or another. Different areas sell different items. But say I wanted to buy diamonds, I could buy full 300 units for 1,881 UEC. That fills my ship up entirely. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to back away. I don't need to do any shipping. But we're going to go get the package you want. So hold F, go through here. Hold F, click cycle, go through here, and we are going to head back towards the package. And I'm going to show you a faster way to use the airlocks. Um, as opposed to holding F and clicking the door, holding F, clicking the, uh, the cycle button, just like the door to your HABs, 
tap M to get the items that you want. So I'm gonna walk across the landing pad here. Spacebar jumps, so you can do little jumps if you want. Don't jump off things that'll kill you. Let's come here, tap F. Go in, tap F. Way to the door. And we're gonna go through another door, tap F. And there's what we're wanting. We're wanting to pick up this box apparently of metal. I could hold F, click grab, but you'll know already I'm gonna say tap F, and you've picked it up. Now we're gonna head back out. Tap F. You're a bit slower when you're carrying items, you can't really run. Tapping F. Tap F. We're gonna go to our ship. Now, when we're at our ship, you can easily get in the ship with the item you're carrying. Uh, all you have to do is go enter ship and you will carry your item into the ship with you. Uh, you don't have to worry about dropping or putting down as you climb in. It allows you to do that. Once we're in here, we're going to face backwards a bit. I'm going to look at this and hold F this time. Drop or place are your two options. Go to place and it gives you a blue lookout or blue outline I should say where you can place it. And now it's more securely uh, stowed into the ship. Go over here. We're going to get into our pilot seat. And our ship will be powered on already. So your shields are on, your ship is on. The only thing that's not on is your engines. So tap I, and we're going to get engines on. Space bar to go up a bit. We're going to fly. This time, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to bring up my landing gear to show you what happens when you take a jump. But I'm going to hit B, so I can see my, uh, my uh, jump points. As soon as they turn blue, I know I'm high enough, which on Hurston is about 10,000. This changes between planets. I mean, Crusader, it's about 150,000. Uh, New Babbage, I believe, is about 1,200. Uh, moons are definitely shorter, depending on the moon, because it's really dependent on the atmosphere of the planet you're on. So we're going to be heading towards the moon, one of the moons. You can see there's actually one right there. But we're flying, and as you can see, it's harder for me to turn my ship when I'm flying higher than my full speed. So this is Ariel, which is a fairly hot moon. Uh, you will definitely overheat on that moon if you're there too much. So we are at 8,500... 9,000. There we are. So let go of my throttle. We're going to aim towards the next location. And we look down. And where is... So I just suddenly realized I'm aiming at the one down, but it's never moving. The one down is the one behind me. I actually want to aim this way. So I could aim at this moon and then jump from there. But if you're trying to jump somewhere you don't know where it is, I'm going to turn that off for a second. I'm going to hit F2. F2 is your star map. And you can see we are right here, this little diamond. And we want to get to drop off package at Aberdeen. So I'm going to click Aberdeen and set route. Now, when I hit B for my jump drive, there's only one arrow. There's only the arrow for uh, Aberdeen. And it's telling me I can't get there because there is a planet in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump to what it's telling me to go do, which is Orbital Marker 5. Orbital Marker 5 brings me around the planet. So I've aimed at it, holding B. I jump to it, and now I should be able to aim directly at the moon. So there's the moon, Aberdeen. Aimed at it, I'm spooling up, and I'm calibrating. Once I'm calibrated, hold B again, and we're going to fly 67,000 kilometers to the moon on Aberdeen. As you see, it stops you before you slam on the surface, which is awesome. Now there was a bit of a cool down, but because we didn't go far, and this is a fairly quick uh, refresh, we're able to not have to worry about the cool down and waiting too long. We've now aimed at where we're gonna get our package. We're gonna hold B again. And we're going from space to the planet surface. So I point out before that when your ship goes in a jump, your landing gear drop or, or folds in. So it's folded in. So I'm going to type tap N to make sure they're out. So I don't. Uh, I don't. 
uh, try to land without my landing gear down and I don't rub against the surface. And we're now going to fly towards the location I'm going to drop off my package. This place has less of a uh, uh, atmosphere, so my lights will work a lot better. Those little things showing up here, these little like symbols look like rocks. My scanner is passively picking up mineable rocks. I cannot mine them in the ship, but they're all over the surface of the moon. So if you're looking to, to mine with a prospector, that's how you find them. So I'm slowing down now as I get closer. Uh, I definitely don't want to crash into the surface and my landing gear is down. Pretty much I'm set to arrive. When I arrive, I'm going to do another control uh, that'll show you a fairly simple flight control to get used to flying around in the ships. You can see I'm already within range of the Platinum Bay services, so uh, that's showing up in my comms monitors. And that's because I am flying towards uh, a, basically a terminal that will allow you to request docking of ships. So that's why they show up. So I'm going to mouse wheel down even more. We're coming closer here. So once we are relatively close, going nice and slow, I'm going to land on the landing pad this time to show you something. So we're hovering over it, and I'm not really moving much, I'm hovered. I'm going to hit F4, hit Z to like change my angle. Um, I can use control to go straight down, space to go up. I can use A and D for left and right, and W and S for back and forth. I can use the mouse to like aim myself. So those are all the controls in order to land your ship. Uh, or pilot ship for all the different aiming. Like that's all you really need to begin piloting. Hit I, turn your engines off, and hold Y. The reason why you turn your engines off are twofold. One is to prevent wear and tear so you don't have to repair your ship as much. But the second is so that if something ever happened where it causes your ship to like raise off the ground a little bit, it's not going to, to keep going. And it's, it's not going to be out of your reach so that you can no longer get back. So you can see once you get out, your ship closes itself up. Uh, we see the marker for our package where we deliver it, but we've forgotten something. So what we need to do is go back into our ship, enter ship, climb in, and pick up our package. Once we've picked up our package, we can exit and deliver it. So we're going to head to where it says drop off package. 324696. Sometimes you're picking up multiple packages and delivering up different locations, and so you have to be able to, to read your packages, look at them, and figure out which one is which. So when I put this down, if I if I was to, to drop this, you can see the package here has the number on it. Package 34 or 324596. So the package shows up, the name shows up. And that's, but we only have one, so it makes it a lot easier to find out where we're supposed to go. So we're going to come into this location here. Tap F to get in. Now, here is where you can make some mistakes. Uh, you don't bring it to this person, although you can interact with them and talk with him. You're bringing it to the Kovalec shipping. You can see the little package drop off point is right here. If you click. The down arrow, which you might think is drop off, you're going to get an error. So I'm going to click that. We're going to wait a moment. Error. Uh, request not found. Because that, if you look really close, that says pick up. Drop off is this way. Second error you can make is to go, okay, place and place the package in there. This is going to be an error. And the reason why is because it doesn't know it's there. So this lid might actually close. So I'm going to grab this before it closes, and you'll have to open it again and take it out. And the reason why is because that is not how you put it in this machine. Click drop off again. What you actually have to do is stand in front of the machine, click hold F on the machine, and click place on the machine. That is how you enter it into the machine. If you don't do that, it will not accept it. Now watch at the top of the screen, current contract, red wind, local delivery route. Objective complete, deliver package. We have now delivered a package, and then we should get our payment. Uh, contract complete, Red Wing seeking new pilots. Uh, we could use the brackets to dismiss it faster. Awarded 3000 Alpha UEC, so we've got our Alpha UEC. If we click F1, we go to our contracts manager, and to accepted, it's currently empty because we've 
we've done already. If we click on history, we can see this is what we've done. We've actually completed it. If we click on Delphi, you can see that we've earned a little bit of reputation. So we're a junior runner and we've got this much uh, reputation for doing a package delivery. If we fill this up and get to runner, we're going to be getting bigger package uh, missions that will be worth a lot more money. So this is a way to earn more. So that first one uh, was about 3000 and if I click on our contracts manager and we go delivery, you can see these ones are 8000 So you're actually, the first one was just kind of a learning one, you got 3000 but now we can do th uh, 8000 8000 But these ones are different. So you're either picking up three packages from different locations and delivering them to one place, or picking up three packages from one place and delivering them to three other places. So a lot more work for these package delivery missions, but it'll be something we'll do uh, maybe in the next video is trying one where you're doing multiple just to see how they go. But this is just a quick little uh, introduction to how to do the package delivery missions, which I think really are not a great money maker and not super fun after a while. Uh, however, to begin, when you're learning to fly and kind of exploring and checking out places, this is an awesome uh, mission to take. Uh, and you're really not having to like worry about death or destruction. <laughs> you're just having a good time. So, I'm going to enter my ship. We're going to do one more thing to get back home. So now that we're on the moon and we want to get to Lorville or to a station, we're going to get into a seat. We're going to turn on our engines. And we're going to get into space. And then once in space, we're going to plot a course home. If your camera ever does this, where it's like looking all over the place, it's not aimed where it wants, where you want it to, hit F4 twice, and that brings you back to where we are. So we're going to head up out of the atmosphere. Now I'm going to hit B, so you can see right now we're, we're flying into space and how quickly it'll take to get out of what is considered the atmosphere of this moon. So once in space, we are going to head back to Hurston. So if I double click on Hurston, you can see we're in Aberdeen. We want to go to Hurston. If I mouse wheel in there, we can see everything we're aiming for. But we're actually aiming for this bright red circle, which, uh, yeah, it keeps going to Edmund. Hurston. Uh, Lorville. There we go. Just hard to aim at. Lorville, set route. That's where we're going. Uh, you could also head to the space station above, which is Everest Harbor, but we're going to head back to Lorville to, to end this. So we're going to tap B to turn on our, our drive. Now I'm going to try doing something. I'm going to see if I can calibrate before I spool up. Is that possible? No. Sometimes that'll happen, and you hold down B and nothing happens. If that's the case, look away and look back, and that will hopefully reset it that you can jump. If not, Turn your jump off, let it spool up again, and then aim at your target. So flying to Hurston. So when over a planet, if you want to find the major city and you don't want to try to set a route by, by aiming at it and setting it, so I've cleared it to, to show you. Look over the surface and you're looking for like a home plate. There's home plate right there. Home plate is Lorville. There's like these like hexagons. Anyone that's outlined is away. Everyone that's solid is like as on this side of the planet where the other ones have the planet between them. Uh, circles, you can see Everest Harbor is over there, but we're gonna actually fly towards Lorville. So we're gonna hold down or aim at it till we're filled up, hold down B, and we're gonna fly to Lorville. So it always looks like home plate to me, a five-sided shape pointed down. Once we get to Lorville, which I find very easy to land at, uh, we're gonna head to the center of the city, just kind of fly towards the center mass of the city. And it'll be daytime when we get there because we're on the bright side of the planet. That's gonna be awesome for uh, seeing a first landing. You don't have to really, you know what you're aiming for, what you can see. But even at night, Lorville is not hard because it's got this rectangle of lights around it to help brighten it up. So we're getting close to the city. And this, if you saw my first episode of the series, 
you'll see that uh, I was approaching the city. So hitting Q. Now we're behind it, so we're actually going to fly over top of the city before we aim down at the uh, at the spaceport. So I'm going to turn my jump drive off. So now we're over that building, we're going to aim a little bit down. It says we're nearing restricted space, so you don't want to get too close as you're flying over this building. If you look down here, you'll see this bar of light, Tessa Spaceport, Tessa Spaceport. That is showing you one of the bars that is around the, the, air, the spaceport that at night is lit up that you can see it. So we're actually aiming towards the spaceport now. We're coming down right in the center of the city. Eventually, you're going to see something that says contact ATC to land. Uh, and that means that you're definitely close enough that you can call in uh, a request to land. So there it is. Contact ATC to land. It's right at the top there. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to hit S to make sure I slow down because I wasn't slowing down. Hit F11. Friends, landing services. I hit F1 again so I can still fly. It should now be calling them. There you go. So it just said, please proceed to assign landing bay. You say, where is that? And all of a sudden, that chevron in a circle has shown up, and you can see those hangar doors are slowly starting to open. So that is our target. I'm going to mouse wheel back to slow down. I'm going to hit N to make sure my landing gear is out. And just use your mouse wheel. Get it as slow as you can comfortably fly. If you feel you're going too fast, just mouse wheel back to slow down. If you ever are taking your time and the door starts to close, just request a landing and the same door will open again. So you can see my mouse wheel has slowed me down to my maximum speed being very slow. I'm just kind of, with a little ship like this, you don't have to worry about trying to aim flat. You can just kind of aim yourself in. But hitting left control will bring you straight down as well. So you just kind of head in and go down. And now I'm going to use left and right. I can use Q and E to like adjust, you just want to go straight, straight. Now you could land all the way down, but when you're close, like I am, hold in, as opposed to tapping in, which takes your uh, landing gear up and down, holding in is an auto land feature. And that brings you all the way in. And that works on space pads as well that have uh, a requested landing. So it makes it very easy. Tap I to turn my engines off, and then I'm ready to go. But I'm gonna tap I, put my engines back on, hit F1, and I'm going to go to this vehicle maintenance services here and I can refuel quantanium or hydrogen. If I wanted to do that, those are the options. But if I uh, have my engines off, I engines don't off. believe, let me check, oh it still is an option. It used to not be an option, but now it seems to be an option. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to hold Y and get out. And now we are pretty much done. You could go to the space station, use the, the ASOP terminals, and that's what I'm going to do. And you, or the, not the space station, the, oh yeah, I guess the space station terminals though. Uh, we're going here to landing bay, arrivals. You could go and store your ship, and that's what I'm going to do. But if you were to log out of the game right now, everything's fine. Your ship gets stored, you start the game again, you're in your hab, everything is good. You've now done everything you need to do in order to... Uh, to finish the game and that's what I'm right about to do is kind of end this play session it's been about maybe 40 minutes of, of me playing but uh, that's it that's all you need to do if you're in the middle of space you definitely don't want to log out you want to find a, a station to go at there's no real working log out beds at the moment but uh, when you arrive at a space station it is usually a good idea to store your ship so click on the ESOP terminals, click store. And the reason why it's a good idea is if you have cargo in your ship, someone else can go in there and take it. Uh, I don't know why it says claim. Why did that say claim? Interesting. That seems to be a bug. It should not say claim. So if you're going to go sell things, it's a good idea to store your ships before you, you go to the try to sell items so that everything's kind of safe in there. But there we are. That is our first mission. We've earned a little bit of reputation, and you've seen how to fly the ships. Uh, the next one I'm going to do uh, is a little bit more combat-focused, I think. But again, I'll kind of go over the ship controls as I do them. But 
the more and more I go along, the more and more I will just kind of show any new items or, or new techniques or new controls, maybe add some things in there as we go along. Uh, but it's a pretty intense, pretty awesome game. A lot of things have changed, but a lot of things have stayed the same. So if you're watching some of my older tutorials, a lot of the flight controls, a lot of those are the same and have not changed. We'll get into some hand mining soon. Uh, going to make some money. Hand mining actually makes a little bit better money in my opinion than deliveries. Bounties when you're first starting out are actually a really awesome way to make money though. So we'll do that. And hopefully I'll do a little bit more of like the first video I produced. Uh, a little more of a story and I'll do a lot more story and role play kind of together. But the expo is coming up. And so for the next little while, that's going to be my main focus, is checking out the ships at the Expo, seeing what's there. The Expo is definitely going to take up all of my time. So there's not going to be a, a huge amount of work on this tutorial series until after the Expo. But I wanted to get kind of a quick first little start out for anyone who's just got the game and wants to see at least what to do, what they can start doing. So I'll try to get the combat one out next, and then it's going to be Expo. And after the Expo, we'll get into mining, and we'll get into some more advanced money-making uh, things in this game. So until next time, I hope to see you soon in the verse. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.